Before I begin showing footage of the very, very beginning of the uh, build, I kind of think it's good to sort of fast forward. I'm at the midpoint, in my opinion, uh, on this build. So I kind of wanted to go over what to expect and the parts that I'm using and things like that. Um, and if I recover some of these areas in the uh, subsequent videos, um, you know, apologies. But so what we got here is a chassis that was um, designed and, and sold by Amplified Nation. Um, he posted this on the ampgarage.com uh, for the do-it-yourself builder. So I snagged a few up, made some of my own face plates. And here we go. Um, this faceplate material is uh, PCB, actually, uh, the circuit board. Uh, and it was from JLC PCB, uh, front and the back. Um, really cool. And it looks legit. So I, I designed all the, the font and, and this. Uh, <laughs> funny story, I found out what font 2Rock was using by sort of reverse engineering uh, PDF. Uh, of the manual on one of their websites. If you look at what font they used on the PDF, you can sort of figure out, um, I believe it's Kaufman uh, with a K font. So that was kind of fun. And then I just searched around for another font that sort of fit the look and the feel that I was going for. Um, this is my usual Contrax font. But as far as the build itself, getting back on track, uh, a few things to note here is this is my circuit board with the populated parts, or most of the populated parts. So I'll set this down for a minute. And what I've sort of discovered is I knew, based on their the photos of the gut shots and things like that, um, some of their capacitors, mainly everything except for the phase inverter, 0.1 US, seemed a little smaller and were 400 volts. So that sort of piqued my interest a bit. And I'm like, well, which ones are they if they're a little smaller and they're 400 volts? So I initially, because of the Dumble thing, chased the 6PS or the polyester caps, and that was fine. Um, so I, I started getting the 400 volt version of them, which is typically found in the 225P um, series. And they looked a lot different. So I'm like, oh, crap. Well, it's got to be something else. And if you look here, this cap and this cap are kind of big. Again, they're 100 nanofarad or 0.1 uh, UF. So is this. But this is 600 or this is 400 volts. And the only, as far as measurements and what I could tell from pictures and sizing wise, is I was like, hot damn. I think that's a 715, oh, a rebranded, because they were K&M, uh, blue. I think it was rebranded 715Ps. So that's what I'm going off of, is really just the size dimensions. I can't imagine a manufacturer um, would actually create a whole new capacitor if it was polyester at 400 using this. So that's why, or at least traditionally, I've never seen that. Or, yeah, to my knowledge at this point. And so that's why I, I truly believe that these are 715P, all the 400 volts, except for these two phase inverters. Now, the one thing that I sort of stumbled upon is these very, very low capacitance value. I think they're 1 and 2 nanofarad, if I look here. Oh, uh, yeah. 0.001 and 0.002. Those I could only get 715p in 600 volts. So the sizing sort of still looks like it, but the original two rocks do say 400 volts on those capacitors. These three: one, two, and three. Um, so interesting discovery. It goes against the grain for most of the Dumble builds I see out there. And then digging in a little further, um, on the Amp Garage, there was a review by a highly respected um, builder, Ian. 
I think that's how you pronounce it, A-Y-A-N. And he was talking about how he changed the uh, mid-cap out with a 715P in one of his builds, and it made a pretty big difference in the bottom end of his amplifier. So uh, I don't know what that translates. I mean, obviously we're changing out all the capacitors to 715P and not just one. Um, but it's just an interesting sort of thing to think about uh, when it comes to this amplifier. And again, I'm doing a whole brain dump here. And, um, you know, I'm very open with sharing. I don't find that um, sharing stuff hurts, you know, sort of any sort of agenda or financially. In fact, I, I think it, I truly do believe if you're open with just what you're working on, um, you get more people to trust you. Therefore, they're more likely to not the the goal is not to have someone open their wallet, but if I do have a product that I'm trying to sell and, and someone's you know not in position to uh, build something on their own, um, I think that just makes a better fit. So there's a little side <laughs> side thing for you. These uh, resistors were generously donated. I normally, if you watch my channel, I'm not really big into the new old stock mojo, but I thought with this build, let's just go for it. Um, so I had a very generous donation of these Jaloric, um, resistors. I believe they're the LCA 0414 series or 0.6, um, watts. And I try to use them everywhere. In fact, the donor has some more that are coming in the mail, uh, maybe even today. You're going to notice that not all the resistors are that though, um, I believe the new 2-Rock, because these are in limited supply, 2-Rock, um, I believe, has been running out of these Drillorics, so they're substituting with other ones. Um, interestingly, side story, the real John Mayer SIG has, I believe it's E96 series of these Drillorics. What is that E96? That gives you like different types of values. Um, based on like the divisions and the multiplications that go into, you know, why they, why the vendor chose to build with those, um, you know, resistor values. So you're going to see some weird things here. So instead of like 220 K, you're going to see like 226. And then for like these resistors here, those are actually, uh, 1.54, but the ones I have are 1.5. Uh, K and because these are a different series I cannot find for the life of me anywhere <laughs> where I could have bought these Jaloric resistors at the E96 series so I'm measuring each of these resistors to be as close as I can to the value on the uh, original circuit what I can say is that these RN65s, so if you watch any of my other videos, I'm a big fan of these RN65s um, or RN70s, these, these are military um, Dale, Dale resistors, or mil-spec Dale resistors, and the same over here. Super quiet. You can buy these in the E96. So I want to build, just for comparison and a lot of fun, a whole amp with the exact... Print. So the, here's the print of the original 2-Rock, um, John Mayer SIG. So this will get, if you're building this, don't get frustrated when you're like, oh, crap, I don't know, I can't find a carbon film. If you're going for that sort of thing, you can, I can't find a carbon film in that resistor value. Well, you could do one of two things. You can either fi figure out the parallel resistance between two resistors um, to get that number. So you're actually going to use two uh, resistors instead of one in parallel. Or you can go the other way and do, like in this case, a 220K in series with a 5.6K, and hopefully it measures out um, to be really close to this 2.26 or 226K. So you have a few options. Um, you know, it's up to you aesthetically what you'd want to choose to do that. So far, I got pretty lucky with resistance that uh, measures around there. So anyway, going back. These are Koa Spear half watt resistors, and they are small, but the specs are good on them. 
because they are rated for 400 volts, just like these capacitors. Um, you really don't need anything more than uh, 300, but some good headroom. Um, I believe that these Drillorics are rated 500 volts, which are kind of cool um, for the size and the wattage. That's really neat. Um, these capacitors, these cathode bypass and, uh, yeah, well, cathode bypass capacitors and up here for the contour, I believe, um, are Phillips BC. I've got new old stock. Again, I'm, <laughs> I normally don't buy new old stock, but guess what? They, I believe, uh, man, I wish I had, uh, oh, maybe I can grab it real quick. Somewhere down here. All right, so they do make brand new, and who knows? I mean, I'm I'm going to assume that these are the same spec, but this is a brand new version of that electrolytic capacitor. Um, the sizing's right. Everything seems about it. It's blue, if that's important to you. So I'm pretty sure that this uh, capacitor is a new version of that new old stock uh, that I'm using. I bought all these on eBay, by the way. All those blue caps. Um, now, as far as build sequence, is there anything else I could just tell? Oh, the blue resistors that you see in, in that sort of color are new old stock uh, NTE resistors. They're metal film. Uh, I haven't really found a good way. The new, if you went out and bought brand new, um, or at least in my experience so far, brand new of these resistors, they are they really appear to have like a metal oxide coating to them. So no one on the amp garage is really confident that the new ones are actually the metal film that were used in the two rocks in the 2010s. But as you can see here, um, I'm going for a little color coding. Any of the uh, V21s and V26s, or, or actually the you know pin one or pin six, are blue. Then any of the cathodes are uh, are white, and I'm using silver wire. The rumor is that the original amp uses silver wire, and you know on the Hi-Fi forums, silver wire has lower capacitance, which means a little bit more of top end. For the power supply, I'm using the Sprague as per original. Uh, what is not original is using a axial capacitor, the 100 UF, 100 volts, for the bias. Um, I'm using UH4007, uh, which is a ultra-high speed uh, diodes here, instead of what you normally see as the 1N4007s. And the reason for that is, and this is something I'm experimenting with, is I built this amplifier once before using 1N uh, 4001s or 4007s, and the radiation from these diodes was bleeding into the uh, gain pot over here, and it's not very efficient running the, uh, basically right off of V1 all the way up to here and then all the way back um, into the board. And it does create potential for a lot of noise because that's a super sensitive area. So I was looking at my pictures, and I don't think that these were typical 1N 4007s. What I've been doing is a lot of reading, and I think they're UH 4007s. So I'm going to give these a try and see if there are no radiation. If there is radiation, unfortunately, I'm going to have to build my own circuit board and then put it on the wall like you might see some... Uh, vendors do. I know Taylor does uh, for his Wonderland. You can see it in his layout. This thing over here, put it out to the side. That's going to guarantee, and that's what I did when I had that hum on my first build, is I put the diodes onto the side, and then all of a sudden the hum went away. The other thing that I'm sort of separating from the actual uh, two rock is these black resistors are wire wound, three watt resistors, uh, these are dropping resistors, and they're going to be, uh, in theory, a lot quieter from a power supply perspe perspective. So even though I'm using the same caps, um, well, or at least the blue Sprague, um, I believe that these two caps were Rubicon, and this, I don't know what was, but it was a radial standing up mount. Um, 
something I, I, I saw, and I don't know, I'm not quite bought into it all, but this last resistor is carbon film, one of the Drolorks on the original. Um, I don't know, that feels funny to me, but hey, I'll, I'll be willing to give it a try on this build, for sure. You're going to notice on the bottom, there's some resistors, and... I put these resistors on the bottom because I believe that Turok did. And the reason for that, and you'll see, I remember reading a comment once uh, about how it's sort of amateur to put these. And it was from a very uh, semi-well-respected ant builder that has uh, very strong opinions on a lot of things from New Jersey. Um, but he was like, no, you're... You know, basically, it was ill advised to put these resistors on the top because they warm up and then they, in theory, warm up these capacitors and then lower the lifespan of these capacitors. So, that's maybe why 2 Rock put them on the bottom because then the heat it sort of dissipates and, and, you know, distributes around, creates a little barrier. I try to give a little space between the resistor and the board, just prevent any sort of, I don't think they get warm, but any sort of burn off. And then this resistor right here is a fake FET load. So if you look at Taylor's drawing, you see that that uh, resistor right there. In amplifiers that have FETs, like Steel String Singer number two, um, you're going to see this 220K right off of V1. So if you follow the line here, ooh, ooh, ooh. that goes to V1, and then the other side goes here. Um, and that's a 220K. So it's creating a little bit of drag on that um, V1 power. So that's what that resistor is doing. And plus it will drain, um, it'll drain these uh, capacitors after I turn off the amp. So that's sort of what's going on there. Um, as far as build sequence in here, I like to go with the oops, let's go with the front I like to go with building the front panel first so I'm going to talk about how to make your wires nice and straight or your bus bar nice and straight down here at the bottom uh, excuse my pajamas it's getting colder here in the northeast uh, <laughs> um, what are some of the other things that I did oh the resistors or the resistance value of these pots does make a difference because it will change your um, basically where your noon is on your uh, dial. And that does have an effect. You hear about like 20% uh, pot tolerance is making amps all sound different or pedals are all sound different because of that 20% to pot tolerance. And that is true. It is totally true. Um, this treble pot should be measured high, right about plus 15 over the nominal of 250. And then you can sort of see along the way. One of the post mare SIGs had an L on here. and It was actually measured, um, well, it said minus 15 on there. So I tried to get something that was pretty close to that. I didn't have an exact minus um, 15. But the real one of 25s, had uh, just a regular X on here, which to me indicates that it was the regular, right around, the, very close to the 250 nominal uh, resistance. So I like to do the front panel first as much as I can with the parts that I have. Um, this is 750 picofarads. Uh, you'll see that I use different um, resistor types per the original on here. Another discovery was that the mid cap here was 390 and I believe, let me check, yeah, Cheerio Tone has it right at 390 PF and then the Taylor documentation has 330 PF. So that was an interesting discovery and change that does change things because when you flip the switch up, you're actually disengaging or you're, you're bypassing the, uh, the trouble pot or that, um, that mid cap here to create the boost 
the mid boost, and then when it's down, it's sort of back in place. So that does make a big difference. Um, this coax I'm using is is RG188A. It's high temp mil spec silver uh, coax. Super nice stuff. Super nice stuff. Um, and you can see sort of how I'm bringing it up and such, like I do. Uh, <laughs> These switches are your standard Fender uh, switches, just normally close, open, single pull, single throw switches. The lamp is just a standard Fender style. Um, typically, in the two rock, in the corner here, they'll do the hundred because their uh, tra transformers are not center tapped on the. Um, on the heater wire, they have 100 ohm resistors, and it's usually kind of in this corner with a with a lead like this. But I'm not doing that. Um, a, the spacing there is kind of tight, and then B, I could just take these 100 ohms and do kind of like what Dumble does, <clears throat> and put them in the middle of the two power tubes, and then run to ground to do the same thing um, on the heaters. Heaters to ground, heaters to ground on the other side. I did measure these and they're exactly the same. Um, so hopefully that the windings are exactly the same and they're you know in phase with each other or uh, out of phase. I don't know. Uh, because Ch Taylor's chassis has two um, measurement points, I have the two measure points. So again, going back, I did the front panel. I started wiring these leads uh, or the coax to the standoffs. Since I'm waiting for some parts to come in, I didn't fully go all out using the tube sockets. But then um, after, before I started building, you know, these negative feedback loops back here, uh, I'm trying to follow the two rock as much as I can. One of those things, I like to normally fly my um, heater wire, but uh, since I'm trying to go the original, I tucked it in the corner. Uh, pretty ugly pretty unsuccessfully, but it might be my choice of wire. It's 18 gauge, um, mil spec wire, aerospace, whatever, high temp. This stuff is super stiff. And I'm pretty sure that two rock, the, the Carol uh, wire that they use, the USA, um, is, is solid core. So I that, don't judge on that. Judge on this, it's pretty. Um, and I'll go into how I twisted those wires. And now I'm working on the negative feedback. These capacitors on the original um, 25 are NTE brand um, mylar film capacitors uh, for the negative feedback later on um, in the post mirror SIGs they changed those out for like the 400 volts uh, 0.047 or 47 nanofarads um, the big orange drops uh, or they're blue in that case. I'm trying to think what else. These resistors, you can't find them in half watt, so they had to be uh, quarter watt. So I think those are 22. And then these are 10 uh, mega ohms. So I bought a few, I measured them. Uh, who knows if 2Rock actually measured those resistors, but two you know, 22 mega ohms at 5% tolerance means that this actual reading could be huge. Just so keep that in mind um, if they don't measure exact. I'm trying to use as much as the, as the resistor type as I can um, in the spaces, in the places that they are. So if I don't have a particular droloric, You'll see me substitute with a uh, Koa spear if I can. Um, and if they're metal film, if I don't have NTE, I'll try to use a metal film that I have around um, just to kind of keep in spec. But some people say that, you know, between resistor types, they make a difference. Again, if you know me, I, I don't really buy into that mojo crap. But I will entertain it just for science this time around. Um, here's another Koa Spear uh, resistor. This one I don't think matters too much. Uh, my friend 
uh, Raphael, <laughs> uh, he or Bamba or, or Gazi amplification, he thinks um, or suggested that you know maybe this resistor has the potential that different resistors will bleed off top end more than others. Um, on the re reverb, I don't know if I'm going to hear that difference, so I may swap it out if I get uh, a shipment of the 220k. But Anyway, this is a very long video, but I wanted to kind of go over before, like sort of in the, I'm in the midway point, and I want to kind of show you what to anticipate, where to start, um, in case my build series starts off and I, I didn't catch, uh, you know, basically the sequence of things. Or, or I, for me, I'm very much into sort of seeing the future <laughs> and, see, and understanding where I'm going versus what I'm doing right now. So that will help inform, make a better decision. Um, oh, lastly, the 270, I think it's a 270K on Taylor's drawing comes in from over here and then comes back over here down to this side. You see that? Uh, where is it? Up here. Okay. So this resistor comes over and then lands there in his drawing. But what I discovered is that on the 25 and the postmare SIGs, that actually comes in on the other way, which means that there's a very long wire here. So, um, wire length has capacitance. And depending on the wire, it could have, you know, some impact on the high end. So this distance does... I think make a difference um, because you're over six inches and then the, all of the wire, uh, basically the wire specifications could be around 26 picofarad per foot. Um, on this silver wire, I wasn't really able to get a read um, or data sheet on what the capacitance is of the silver wire. But I know that coax can be, you know, as low as 27 Um Picofarad per foot. This is a pretty big run. It's not exactly a foot, but you know, by the time you go to and from this pot, there's significant um, distance, in my opinion, over a foot. So that would affect kind of like your cable and your coax, your guitar cable. The cable distance does make a difference in how much it rolls back. So just another thing to keep in mind. I'm using classic tone. I gobbled up a bunch of classic tone transformers before they went out of business. Um, so I will be using that. And the original amp does use classic tone as well. Uh, they were a special part number. So I hope that they're within range of the original. Uh, we did email to, uh, not to rock. We did email classic tone before they went belly up. And they said that the part numbers are pretty much exactly the same. They just added a five volt, um, winding on here for the uh, switching because there's no uh, switching on the regular Fender Twin power transformers. And you can get away with using uh, Hammond, Mercury Magnetics, uh, I believe it's pronounced Habur. Uh, maybe Pacific transformers will come out with a Fender Twin version in the future, but that's what we're looking at here. Anyway, that's a very long follow-up to my semi-short intro video.